6.30, so uh, you would all stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance and a uh, moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. of the junior academic team and advisors. Who are our advisors? Thank you. Oh, you're right. Recon she said I, I got it wrong already. Right. Recognition of students that earned the Principal for a Day Award at Riddle Elementary. Hey, come on up, Jacob, Mason, and Maddie. Come on up here. Okay. I'm gonna have you stand in front, okay? These three accomplished quite an amazing feat, something that is not done every year at Riddle. Um, they earned 1,000 reading counts points. Now, to uh, kind of put that in perspective, that's something that actually would take all school year long. How can you go it's that? huge. Oh, how, how many books would you guess you read? Just 200, 200, 300, 300, 315. That's how many books they read over the course of the school year in order to accomplish 1,000 reading counts points. It's amazing. Uh, Jacob Miller here, is this back to back, right? Did you do it last year? Uh, 600 last year. So um, I am just incredibly proud. Uh, Mr. Miller and Mr. McLaughlin here served as principal for the day today. And Miss Rupley will be serving for the principal on Thursday. So if you need anything on Thursday, <laughs> Please call Miss Ropley. She'll be handling all business at Riddle. I'm just incredibly proud of all three uh, of these kids. It's a tremendous job they did. And I had a lot of fun with both of you today. And Maddie, I look forward to Thursday. Okay. Congratulations. Next, we have introduction of the junior academic team and advisors. So these guys and a few others um, participated at Valley. It's been a couple weeks now on a Saturday for the Academic Super Bowl competition. I believe it was third, is that right? They placed third in math and science but they got first in interdisciplinary, yes? And then 15th in the state? Yes. So they wow. did an awesome job. You guys want to talk a little bit about what that looks like? I don't think everybody's probably been to an academic Super Bowl competition. <laughs> you want to talk about it, I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not too crowded, but there's a lot of eyes on you. You know that you, there's pressure from all sides, people looking at you to see if you got it right, to make sure that they have it a higher score than you, people behind you, judging you based on what questions you got wrong and right. People from your school and other schools that are just always beaming on you. And sometimes it just, sometimes it's not too overwhelming and sometimes it can be. It's just a game of if you feel like you are paying attention to all those people that are staring at you. You feel the pressure, right? Yeah. Yeah. Did you guys feel the pressure? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you, I'm sorry if I, if you said this, this is murky, but the, um, so you did math, science, social studies, and language arts? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you came in 15th at the state? Yes. Wow. That's outstanding. I'm very happy to hear that. That's, you should all be very proud of yourselves. Did you get some hardware or, or something, a, a medal or a? We got ribbons if we placed in that subject. Mm -hmm. Do you have a nice collection of ribbons from this year? Uh, yeah. Yes. Good. <laughs> Glad to hear that. That's Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, 
presentation of uh, Jacob Brubaker and Zeta Whitmer, students chosen for Young Leaders Summit. That's all right. We can move on. All right. Um, we have the uh, board minutes from the April 17th, 2023 regular board meeting. Also on the docket is approval of the minutes from the May 2nd, 2023 study session. Did everybody have a chance to look through those? Any questions about anything in the minutes? If, if there are no questions, I would entertain a motion that we approve the minutes as read. So moved. Thank you, Jenny. Second. Thank you, Ethan. <coughs> and um, all, those in, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Moving on, approval of the funds report as presented. And uh, anything you want to say, Todd? No, I'll just read through it, unless you prefer me to not. Okay. Um, <laughs> please do. All of it? You're going to read through all of it? No, just, just, a, just April. Okay. No, just <laughs> April. Uh, education fund in April, we had receipts of $999,464.31. Expenses of $856,911.18, and we transferred $300,000 to the operation fund. Our cash balance at the end of April, the education fund is $1,225,050.80. Debt service fund, we have receipts of $7,048.72. Cash balance at the end of April, debt service fund is $891,000. $718.59. And the operations fund, we had receipts of $10,511.90. We also had the transfer from the education fund of $300,000. And we had expenses in the operations fund of $283,634.05. Cash balance in the operations fund, excuse me, at the end of April. $83,335.37. You want to go ahead and do claims? You can do them all. Sure. Uh, we're asking for approval of claims for, uh, since the last board meeting, in the amount of $1,028,795.72. And payroll? Uh, two payrolls, April 21st and May 5th, um, totaling $1,035,859.58. Okay. And any questions or comments about the funds report or the financial report? Um, I'll accept a motion that we approve those as read. Mark, so thank you. Second. And Casey, thank you. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. All right. Next we have the first reading of the funds re of the uh, excuse me the um, I know I'm looking for the word. Thank you. Uh, of the policies, we had quite a few. Um, not what that's supposed to be. Yes, please. Thank you. I am not online. It's bringing up what I had saved earlier today. Okay. Uh, thank you. That's what I'm looking for. Um, so, if you uh, please correct me if I make mistakes. This is not as easy as it looks. Uh, we have the first reading of uh, uh, policy. 8500 uh, bylaws 0167.3 policy 
Just note in the information tab, it lists 5772. The correct policy is posted here, which is 5722. But just to be clear, the, the first reading is good. 5722, the actual policy posted, is the correct one. Thank you, Jen. Next, <laughs> <laughs> we have the approval of what you say. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get, yeah. Right. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we need to approve an overnight field trip to Manchester University for the wrestling team June 25th through the 29th. We could probably, if, if everyone agreed and you agreed, we could probably approve them all together. All right. Is everybody all the okay with that? At least all the field trips. Yep. Uh, number two, the approval of the FFA trip to the state convention, June 20th to June 22nd in West Lafayette, Indiana. Number three, approval of rate increase for, oh, never mind. That's not a, I guess it's just two of them. There's just, <laughs> thank you, I was you, like, Jenny. oh, all of Jenny, you're coming here. Just two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so do I have a, a, a motion to approve the field trips? to Manchester University for the wrestling guys and, a, or, and girls and approval of the FFA trip to the state conference. So moved. Thank you, Ethan. Second. And Jenny, thank you. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries, six to zero. Next, we have the approval of the rate increase for students attending before and after school daycare program. Um, these were discussed in our study session. And uh, Jan, is there anything you want to say? It's just, I know uh, not everybody is able to attend the study session, but 
Todd and I went through, we were looking at various areas in the district, and one of those things that <clears throat> caught our attention is the fact that we have not reevaluated our before school and after school care um, since pre COVID, and, and Todd's not certain we've looked at it since he has been here. And so we wanted to make sure that um, we remain as close to cost neutral as possible in regards to this. And so we're proposing um, the rate increases as outlined here. Um, doing some checks around the community, I still think that these are uh, very fair prices for parents for the daycare service that's provided before school and after school. Any questions from the board? Any, any from the gallery? All right, I would entertain a motion that we approve the, um, the rate hikes as uh, explained. So moved. Thank you, Jenny. Second. And Casey, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Next, approval of the change of date for graduation ceremony to Friday, May 31st, 2024, for the 22, or excuse me, to 2023 and 2024 school year. Um, Jana explained that to us at the study session. Um, it's just, uh, <coughs> doesn't put graduation out like a week after the um, actual last day of school. And also there are fewer conflicts with um, athletic events and such at the regional and state levels if we go into, if we do that earlier. Yeah. <coughs> Any questions? Any questions from the gallery? Okay, I'll then entertain a motion, please. So moved. Ethan? So second. Put Mark Casey. Okay. Okay. And uh, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Just put Macy. <laughs> <laughs> Motion carries six to zero by Macy. I don't like the Macy. My husband insisted that I get a new laptop because it would be easier for our accountant. <laughs> Uh, I'm an Apple girl, so this thing and I are not getting along at all. Just so. okay. student and stakeholder focus. I have it right here. First, oh, what no, is this? oh, I did miss it. I'm so sorry. I skipped a whole page. might pertain to you, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, oh, Mark. I have known Mark since I was four, just so you know. We grew up next door to each other. And my husband hung around with him and probably paid, played basketball over there, but um, it would have been weird because, you know, when Charlie graduated, I was 13, so I didn't really know. Anyway. Uh, approval of the MOU agreement with the Fulton County Sheriff's Department. So um, the contract is, is here. I've been working with uh, Sheriff uh, Travis Heichman in regards to this. I do believe that we, going back and forth as I look through this, I want to make sure that I point out the changes that we are proposing. We are looking at adding, uh, we have for several years had a full-time SRO. This would be adding one part-time position. Um, the hours, there is a correction that needs to happen here in regards to it being 28 hours per week so that we're in compliance with the Fulton County Sheriff's, uh, the county department, correct? It needs to be 28 hours, so. 29, 29. Oh, it is 29? Okay. Correct, yeah. Okay, then it is, I apologize. Um, so we would be adding a part-time SRO the equivalent of 29 hours per week. I know we went back and forth on that, so I apologize. Um, we would work, if you scroll down to the next page, item 2.4, we would be working with the weekly schedule with our administrative team and the SROs to make sure that we had important events covered, especially with the with a part-time officer making sure that um, 
we outline specifically what coverage needs to happen if, if we have concerns. Um, we would continue to provide them with laptops and the licensing for Spillman, which is something that we currently do. Another difference in this contract is we would pick up not to exceed $750 per contract year for the uniform of the part-time officer. The Sheriff's Department takes care of um, the full-time officer. Um, working with Todd, this would be, uh, the funds come from a matching grant fund. So as we write that grant, we would ask for reimbursement so it's matching funds. If, if we put up 30,000, then the grant would bring forth the, the other 30,000. So um, I believe uh, the principals can attest to it, but um, it has been very helpful to have two SROs uh, moving about the district throughout the course of the day and at various events that we have. Any questions? Sure that uniform fee is not going to break the bank. No. <laughs> Just making sure. And that would be not to exceed. I would accept a motion that we approve the MOU with the Fulton County Sheriff's Department. So moved. Mark and Ethan. Ethan. That's exactly what we're like. Thank you. Okay, and all those in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Moving on, approval of the letter of agreement between the Indiana School for the Blind and Visually Impaired and Rochester School Corporation. So, Jim, if you'd like to share this contract. Sure. So, uh, we have several students in our corporation that have blind low vision impairment, and there are few and far between teachers in the state. So, we typically look to the Indiana School for the Blind and Visually Impaired for those services. So, this is just an agreement that we do every year with them. So we pay them on an hourly rate. Any questions from the board? This is a pretty normal practice. I remember doing this in mm -hmm. a different corporation. Is that second, whereas supposed to have us after it? What? That second, mm -hmm. whereas item there has a, a blank space that is supposed to, I'm assuming, have us as the other party involved. I was supposed well, to say, whereas. Um, is because it just says whereas blank is a little blank. I don't know. We might want to clean that up. <laughs> Other than that, it's just. It's a, yeah. it's a boilerplate. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Okay. I yes. figured we should just make sure that they're not agreeing to a blank entity <laughs> being involved in <laughs> that. Well, we're at the top. Yeah. Does the LEA in parentheses too? Yeah. yeah. All right. Any other questions? I will accept a motion that we approve the agreement between the Rochester School Corporation and the Indiana School for the Blind and Visually Impaired. So moved for that correction. Hey, Stephen. <laughs> when did you get here? I'm kidding. <laughs> it's melting. Leave him alone. <laughs> All right. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. And didn't we? Okay. So the next one is approval of the change of the date of graduation. Yeah. I think we already did that. <laughs> it's, it's somebody was on the wrong page. Sorry. We were like super excited about that. So just <laughs> what? We I was. I was really excited, excited because you know my brain earlier in the month was going, do we do that for this year or is it next year? Yeah. Okay. She just can't wait for that. So now, she's so excited about this job. <laughs> Maurice. Yep. Perfect. Oh, got it. Okay, got it. Um, donations uh, this past month uh, for Columbia Entry uh, Elementary, $40 for student lunch accounts for students in need was paid by an anonymous donor. Riddle Elementary, $250 for one school, one book from the Riddle PTO. RMS, $500 for end of year school activities from the Optimist Club. RHS Drama, $30 to the Drama Club from an anonymous donor. Rochester FFA, $600 for a ski trip for FFA members from Dan Shally. Rochester Community School Athletics, 
for an unknown amount for a set of golf clubs for the Rochester Community School Corporation student need. And that is from Maurice Murphy. Marcy. Marcy. Why does that say? No, it's Maurice Murphy. Oh. There was it's a typo here. Okay. Let's see. All right. <laughs> any, any other questions about the <laughs> donations? <laughs> All right. I would accept the motion to approve the donations as read. Second. Casey and Ethan. All right, all those in favor, raise your right hand. I always wonder what would happen if you raised your left hand. This is just a thought. Okay, so the motion carries six to zero. Next, we move on to the personnel report. As you begin the personnel report, I would propose that we remove the recommendations for volleyball coaches at this time. I need to seek some clarification around what was submitted. All righty then. So, uh, for Columbia Elementary Summer Intercession, Brittany Ross, first grade teacher, Michelle Yeager, kindergarten teacher, Hannah Clemens, instructional assistant, all at their hourly rate. At Real Elementary Summer Reading Program, Sarah Dalton, teacher, Jennifer Keller, teacher, Sydney Goodman, teacher, and Rebecca Lee, teacher, all at their hourly rate. For the high school, summer school, Ken Hughes, Algebra 1 and 2, Ryan Helt, English, Bryce Roberts, PE, they'll do half time, and Tristan Wilson for PE will do the other half, and Justin Pearson for ASE, and those are all at their hourly rate as well. Summer intercession, Deb Wolford, math, Ken Hughes, math, Bryn Wilson, English, Eric Davis, English, and those, everyone's at their hourly rate up to this point. Athletic recommendations, Colt Meadows, eighth grade girls basketball, stipend $517.64. Uh, are those, those are the volleyball you want me to skip, right? Just making sure. Okay. Moving on, resignations. Mary Ryder, Columbia Elementary, effective May 12, 2023. Kelly Gard, Rural Elementary Counselor, effective May 26, 2023. Keaton Mills, RHS Custodial, <coughs> staff, effective May 5, 2023. Ashley Furnable, Columbia Elementary, IA, effective May 6, 2023. Mindy Carroll, Corporation Speech and Language Pathologist, effective June 30th, 2023. And Family Medical Leave Act. Chelsea Carell, starting 4-17, 23, for approximately two months. Brittany Meyer, extension from 4-24-23 through 5-26-23. Joanna Johnson, starting 426-23 through 510-23. Any questions or comments about these? All right, I will accept a motion that we approve the personal personnel report with the exception of the, the volleyball. Thank you, Jenny Ann Ethan. That's okay. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. And now we have superintendent's business. So we'll begin by asking each of the principals to share out um, successes from the last month, uh, things that we're working on, and I think to some degree that survival of the next four days, <laughs> and then what supports we need moving forward. So Jason, if you don't mind starting uh, for Columbia. All right, so we've had a lot going on this month. Um, we had our annual kindergarten zoo field trip, went very well. Uh, we moved that to a Thursday and uh, it was less crowded. Uh, fantastic trip. Uh, we also had a petting zoo brought to us by our PTO uh, last week and they brought in uh, a bunch of animals. It was really uh, a good experience for those kids. Um, it's amazing at how many kids haven't actually been up and close with a pig or a goat or some things like that. And 
Um, so it was a fantastic experience for um, for them. Was that school wide, Jason? Uh, yes, ma'am. School wide, and we also did uh, like a uh, planning. We did we planted some. Uh, every kid got an opportunity to plant a, a flower and take home for the, the summer to plant. So um, it was a good day. Uh, we had an artist in residency at Columbia, and we do that every year. Jill Weaver brings uh, brings in somebody. This year she brought in a high school jazz band, uh, and they came in and played uh, played some really good tunes and had a lot of fun teaching the kids, letting the kids kind of see the instruments and stuff like that. And they did a great uh, rendition of Journey. So uh, <laughs> I might have been dancing in the back. <laughs> We also had a, uh, a, a new thing that we've done here at uh, Columbia for the first year. We always have a parent night for incoming kindergarten parents, but this year we decided to do a, uh, we called it Wild About Kindergarten. That was our theme. We'll theme it up every year from now on. But um, So we did like a safari theme. But the, the, the purpose of it was to get all of our incoming kindergarten parents in the building, let them meet teachers, let them walk around while school was going on, see the classrooms. Um, Get out, get out on the playground and play. We got a bus, let the kids go on bus rides. They, they absolutely love that. Um, and then we, we raffled off some, uh, some supplies for the kids to, to help some parents out and stuff like that. And uh, they just really had a good time. It was uh, very laid back. Um, the parents, I think, really enjoyed it. The kids obviously enjoyed coming in. They were so excited. They, didn't, they wanted to come back the next day and get kindergarten started. But um, <laughs> it, was, it was good, and uh, I appreciate everybody that, uh, that helped out with that. That was... Uh, good event so um, we also uh, coming up we have got uh, a Cubs game on Wednesday and this is a PBIS celebration um, for the number of um, star cards that our kids they set a goal and they reached it and uh, the star card piece continues to be uh, I'll get you a total count at the end of the year but um, I started hanging them up on my walls outside of my office and my walls got covered and um, I just, I ran out of space and I, I'm not gonna lie, I don't have time to go out there. I have a stack of them probably this high on my desk right now that I just haven't been able to keep up with. There's, um, there's so much recognition for um, the positive uh, behavior that uh, the kids are doing. And, it's, and they still love it, they still love it. So um, they're not getting tired of it, if anybody would tell you that. Uh, every time some kid passes me in the hallway and they're carrying a star card, they stop and they tell me about it. Um, and it's it's a really good uh, good experience for them. So we have high school kids coming over to uh, walk the halls on Friday, uh, Zebra Zone on Friday, and uh, we're also going to do some uh, outdoor activities through our PTO, um, some water activities and um, some bouncing and, and things like that out uh, tomorrow and um, Wednesday. On Wednesday, our pre-K will host a. Um, graduation ceremony and a little bit of a concert um, for the parents and um, that will be their last day and uh, they, they've been rehearsing that in their little gowns and outfits and they, it's, it's pretty pretty cute so hate to see uh, hate to see it come to an end but that's what we've got this summer we'll have uh, summer reading over at riddle and um, we'll have summer speech as well so. any questions from Mr. Snyder? Mr. Um, we're at Riddle. We wrapped up our iLearn um, early May. So you know, shout out to Tech. Thank you for all your assistance there, Mrs. McLaughlin, um, getting everything ready. And really, our uh, Title I teachers, too, they help tremendously with all the makeups that we, we have to do. And that's a lot of work. And some of our teachers, they get kind of trapped in their little cave there for a week. And when they come out and they're done with iLearn, it's they're kind of shocked to be back in the real world. <laughs> so it's, I really appreciate it. It's, it's a lot of work to get that done. Um, we had our red carpet event at the Times Theater. So thank you, Times Theater, for allowing us to do that. And RTC and Dakota there for filming that. That was a really nice event, really cool. Um, they streamed it live, and all the kids dressed up. And they were super pumped. Like, even when the screen came on just that show that there was a DVD in the thing. They were, oh, and, you know, it was, it was a big deal. Um, all three of our grade levels went on a field trip, so they hit up the zoo, um, museum down in Indy, and a Fort Wayne Science Central. The fourth grade had their wax museum today that went really well. Um, and the fourth grade will be doing their color run over to middle school tomorrow. And uh, the last day we'll have a field day going on. And uh, as far as Gearing up for the summertime, 
Um, we've got our I Read Summer Camp. That'll be the first couple of weeks. And as Mr. Snyder mentioned, we have the summer reading program at Riddle and Fort County will be over there this summer as well. So Riddle's building will still be hopping a little bit this summer. And I like that. Uh, we also wrapped up I Learned. Things went well, thanks to Tech and Megan. And again, we have the same thing. We had some teachers step up and help with makeups and get our virtual students done, and that's very, very helpful. So that went well. Our academic Super, Super Bowl team that you met earlier did very well with their uh, Valley competition. Um, we had Teacher Appreciation Week, and we appreciate all the extras that um, people did to help us. Some parents sent some things in, some students did some nice things. Um, we had a good week with that. We had our 7th and 8th grade semi-formal end of the year dance, the, not this Saturday, but the Saturday before. That went very well um, as well. The kid, it's always fun to watch the kids dance and have a good time, and they're dressed up and look nice. So um, they always enjoy the candy bar as well. <laughs> uh, the 5th and 6th beach party was this past Friday, and that's a whole different environment. <laughs> uh, a whole different kind of fun. And there was lays, and uh, there was coconuts, and different floaties and all kinds of things that they enjoyed um, and had a great time as well. Um, we did just get back from our Washington DC trip. I have not fully recovered. <laughs> it will take a few days. I went eight years ago and apparently eight years makes a difference. <laughs> it was, we had beautiful weather though. We couldn't have asked for better weather. It was seriously 73 and sunny. It was beautiful every day. We saw a lot of great things. The kids had a good time and, and that's why we do it. And there was lots of thank yous. And, now, Mr. Porterfield, who was here for the academic Super Bowl team, he went with us, and he had a blo He could have been our guide. He was very knowledgeable and super excited and, and had a great time. And so that's well, that's what you want to see. That's why we do those things. Our ag and facts class uh, combined for a dairy unit and had a guest speaker. Her name was Alex Levelette, I think is how how you say it. She's from Cheesecapes, and they did charcuterie. Um, and the kids had a great time with that, not only learning about different cheeses and how to organize a board um, with different things, but tasting them as well. Um, and there was ranges from kids that liked a whole bunch of them to not liking any of them, so that was fun for them as well. Um, upcoming, we have fifth grade field day tomorrow as well as the fourth grade color run coming over. On Wednesday, we're gonna film the lip dub, which is huge at RMS, because we're super excited about filming the lip dub, so we'll be looking for that to come out. Our seventh grade breakfast, will be on Thursday, as well as our award ceremonies for 5th, 6th, and 7th grade, and then of course our PBIS, PBIS day on Friday, which is controlled chaos. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? This is Atkinson. Um, for the high school, so um, at the middle of April, we had the Art Banner Contest. I know some of you were there. Um, I'm gonna give a shout out to Mrs. Schaefer, because from eight to 12, I think she swept grades eight through 12 against Castanon Valley, so that's always a pretty cool night, um, but her sweeping that was kind of fun for us. Um, right after that, we had the prom crash reenactment where the Sheriff's Department and the EMS and Kiwana Fire Department came in. Robert Tossin came in that morning and told his story to the kids. I think it was very impactful to them. Um, the Sheriff's Department, Woodlawn, and Judge Heller then did the whole reenactment right down to the accident and then an ER scene and then the judge scene with um, somebody getting tried for drunk driving. So I think we all felt like that went very well. Um, we had the FFA banquet and then we had prom, which is always a great time. Um, Mr. Lau did the EV Grand Prix World Finals with his EDD class. We had the recruit recruitment fair. Um, we had over 30 businesses there this year. Um, one had over 20 applications from students, just handed in even that day. Um, she ended up scheduling the interviews at the high school, so she came in, scheduled with the kids in 20 minute increments, and the conference room across from my office was just an interview. So it was really kind of neat to see. It was, um, I always ask the businesses for feedback, and it was really fun to hear them talk about how professional our kids were, how they had these resumes ready, and I'll give that testament to the teachers. They did a good job preparing the kids. We had Christina Hughes lead a safe school athletic walkthrough through all of the areas that our athletes might be. Um, she did that with the fire department and the sheriff's department and the police department. Um, we went all through the high school, through a lot of the middle school, and then out to the baseball field, softball fields, and that was, I felt, very beneficial. We had our final choir concert and band concert. Eighth grade did the reality fair. 
Um, this past week, they had the downhill derby on the hill. Our eighth graders just got back from the National, Honor, National Junior Honor Society trip as well. And then we had Senior Honors Night, Friday night, and that was where um, the seniors received their scholarships and just over $106,000 was given out to our seniors that night. It was pretty cool. Uh, coming up, these people all get to have fun. We get to have finals. So <laughs> ours start uh, Wednesday is it's our finals. For you. It is for me because the kids are all in their class taking finals. So, um, and then Friday we have our senior breakfast. We'll go walk through the, um, the elementaries and then we'll do graduation practice. So that's a big day on top of the underclassmen will have their awards. And then um, June 2nd is baccalaureate graduation and then we'll do summer school and intercession. That's what we've got coming up. Just a few things. <laughs> um, before we close, I don't know if Mr. Martens or Ms. Miller would like to give um, a brief overview of our meeting with Jack Jordan and your thoughts or words that you'd like to share. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> uh, I thought it was a very good meeting that we were. Uh, discussing a lot of stuff. We introduced our, our corporation to Representative Jack Jordan. We had a lot of good conversation. We were able to be fairly candid about some things that uh, we weren't happy with on the legislative side of things, but also some things that have been going uh, pretty well and have, have worked out well uh, are on our end, uh, talking about things like all the pathways we can offer and, and all the good that's come out of that. Um, so I thought the uh, that it was a very good discussion. There were a lot of, you know, a lot of good things, a lot of uh, some criticism to share, and, and it was just very productive and felt very constructive. Yeah, I agree. It was a nice opportunity for for uh, the high school and the principals to kind of shed light on themselves and what we're doing here, which was uh, a wonderful thing to see. Uh, thank you, Luke, for taking your finger out of the dike. And and this kind of have some opportunity to speak to him on a Kansas situation. Uh, that was nice. Thanks for coming out. But I think it was good. I think we represented the school very well, and I think uh, Jack was duly impressed. So. I, I felt like his excitement about how many pathways we had was, was just really, he was like shocked in a good way, mm -hmm. you know, that we have, how do you do 16 pathways? So we, you know, Oscar and uh, Lori had a chance to uh, be excited about that and talk about what we're doing. And it was eye-opening for me because I don't know the day-to-day. -day. But uh, I did feel like it was a good opportunity. And um, I do feel like he listened to us. Uh, and I'm sure that things on his end are not easy either. So, uh, but I, I just thought it was just a really Good meeting. It was ironic that you guys were being with Jack Jordan and our kids at DC were being with Mike Brown and Jack Jordan oh. and Rudy Beckham. All of them came out to talk to us at the Capitol. Wow. That was so cool. Day. I got pictures. We were very critical that day. <laughs> <laughs> And I want to thank the team as we wind down this year. Everybody in this room plays such an integral part of what we do day in and day out. So thank you all for your leadership and your support. Um, you can sense the energy in the district, and it's just a matter of uh, containing that until Friday at 3 o'clock. So <laughs> that's all I have. All right. Uh, if anyone would care to make a motion to adjourn. I just want to share one quick thing, and on a beautiful night, but the Fulton County Youth Leadership Academy had graduation here yesterday. Uh, it's not affiliated directly with the school, but it is supported by all three school corporations within, the, um, within Fulton County. And it's just very exciting and encouraging to see those students, and when Lori was mentioning about interviewing, um, that's one of the things that we did on our last session was mock interviews. and. Um, the people that were brought in are people that work in human um, resources in, in Indianapolis, and they were impressed by how well our students interviewed, and just the opportunities you all have given them is such a benefit. And so I think 
the um, all of the corporation, high school especially, because supporting that kind of a an organization is, I feel like it's important, but just like with the Adult Leadership Academy takes time, um, that so does that from the youth end. So thank you for that. Thank you for May Sember, and I just have a like soft spot, soft spot for Leadership Academy. So congratulations to Todd for graduating, and thank you for representing Rochester this year. I do it. And then if no one else has something to say, I'll make a motion for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for stopping by. Have a great evening. And listen, um, you know, when we had our little, you know, moment of silence, I'm praying for y'all. This poor day, I mean, we've got so much into it, but there's also a little bit of chaos. I it's chaos. It's just chaos. And uh, but for you elementary people, don't take all the snacks. You know they'll be bringing you stuff. It's crazy. Bring them home. Take them over here.